Hey guys, and welcome to episode two of my new series, Two Cents with Tosh. As you can see, my seating area has changed a little bit from episode one. We hosted Thanksgiving here this year and we had to move our couch to this wall over here. So I just brought this chair down from my office and I thought this would work just fine. I also did get some new pictures, but yeah, I just wanted to explain the setup because I didn't want anyone to be confused. Like, is this the new setup? Not necessarily, I don't know, we'll see where it goes. But one more thing I wanted to share before we jump in. I mentioned this in the vlog, so if you watch the vlogs, you already heard this, but I wanna be completely transparent. Like there's no point in me pretending like everything I do is a success or anything like that. Like what's the point in that? But I am not getting very many entries for this series. And without the entries, I can't continue the series. So please, please, please email two cents with Tosh at gmail.com with your scenarios or questions that you need advice on. Anything that you're comfortable sharing, of course. But yeah, this series, I love it you guys seem to enjoy it but it is a collaborative series so without you guys i can't continue doing the series because i quite literally need your entries in order to produce the episodes. So yeah, hopefully we get more entries and I'm able to continue the series. If not, we will go from there. Honestly, this series is not just for me, it is for you guys. So if you wanna keep doing them, then we'll keep doing them. If not, then we won't, it's all good. No harm, no foul, but I just wanted to let you know and be fully transparent that I'm not getting very many entries for this series. And at the end of the day, I can't do the series without y'all's entries. So the email address will be in the description box and here on the screen. So so please, please, please get those entries in. And without further ado, let me give you my two cents. Okay, the first entry says, Hi Leah, I'm so happy you're doing Q&A for viewers. I love your YouTube channel and social content. They're so calm and soothing. Thank you so much, that really means a lot. Let's dive into my situation briefly. Let's fucking do it. My, I, I was not ready for the sentence I was about to say. My husband cheats on me with transgenders, escorts, elderly and disabled people, you name it, because he claims regular women aren't initially interested in him at all and said he doesn't like the responsibility of dealing with a wife. He's also bisexual. I dealt with his emotional mental distress, diagnosed bipolar, insomnia, pity, childhood trauma from his drug abuse, abandoned parents, etc., for nearly 14 years since he financially supports me while I find my true career purpose, yet I have been heavily distracted in finding purpose while dealing with him. We have no children, thank God. I find a typical nine to five brings me anxiety. I also have a mother whom lives with me that isn't financially stable to live on her own and relies on me for general help, including rides to grocery stores, etc. While I can maybe separate from him, my mother causes relationship stress as well. My sibling hasn't paid a visit to our mom in over five years because she assumes Arizona is too far travel to California, yet she bribes ongoing support for her physical and financial slack. Leah, what's your advice? Girl, I was not ready for that. Okay, let's break this up into pieces because there's a lot going on here. So first things first, your husband cheating on you is not okay. Unless you both have an agreement to have an open relationship of some sort and you're both okay with that decision, that's one thing. But if you are committed to this marriage in every way that you can and he's not doing that, then you don't need to be in that relationship. Like you said, you don't have children, so you don't have that commitment so that makes it a lot less messy and a lot easier but i would not put up with cheating from a partner or a spouse it doesn't sound like you're okay with it but if you're okay with him you know sleeping with these other people and it would make you feel better to sleep with other people too then maybe have that conversation and be like okay if you're doing this we're both doing this type of thing but if you're not okay with it then you should not put up with it period and you mentioned that you've supported him in all these different areas of his life and his past traumas and he still cheats on you I feel like that's extremely disrespectful. Also him saying women aren't initially interested in him at all. What are you? Are you not his partner and his spouse? Why does he need other people to be interested in him? That doesn't make any sense. It seems like he has a lot to work on and a lot of that has nothing to do with you, but you're the one getting the short end of the stick and getting hurt by all these things. So first things first, I would separate or divorce this person because that's not fair to you. That relationship dynamic is not fair to you if that's not what you want. But the tricky part is you said that he financially supports you while you find your true career purpose, but that it's hard for you to find your purpose because you have have to deal with all of his stuff. That's tough. 
I think you have to decide what is worth it and what's more important to you. So for instance, you either have to go ahead and get the job that you don't necessarily want and kind of struggle through that while you figure out your life path on the side and then you can leave him because you don't need him for that financial support anymore. Or you have to stay and not get the job and let him financially support you, but then you have to put up with all of his stuff. So you can either put up with the cheating and the behavior, or you have to put up with the nine to five. Unfortunately, you know, life is not perfect and we're not always gonna have the ability to have the perfect situation. So in this case, you kind of have to choose which one is gonna be better for you mentally, which one's gonna make you happier in the end. Try not to think like, right in front of you because right now the situations are going to be hard you're choosing from a difficult situation and another difficult situation so you have to think big picture in the long run what's going to make you happier will it make you happier to continue this dynamic with him in your life and you dealing with the infidelity and the lies and all of that just so that he'll financially support you or will it make you happier in the end to separate from him that way you can focus just on you and then temporarily you might have to do stuff you don't like like the nine to five and then eventually you'll find your passion and maybe not have to continue the nine to five forever i don't know i think in this situation i mean it's 100 percent up to you but you have to think big picture here it's definitely got to be hard having to take care of your mom and be financially responsible for that not just financially, but also taking care of her physically. But that's also not your burden to carry. Yes, we love our parents. Yes, we want the best for them and we don't want them to struggle and we want to be by their side. But your sibling fully put up a boundary saying, I'm not doing that. I live too far. That makes my life more difficult. She's not struggling with that burden because of that boundary she put up. So maybe there is a way to get other relatives to help out so that you aren't the sole person taking on all of that responsibility because that's a lot. You're dealing with this man that's not treating you right and is doing literally his own thing. You're also dealing with your mother and also trying to find a purpose for yourself. I think the overall theme of all of this is you are giving so much of yourself to everyone around you, whether they deserve it or not, and you're not doing anything for yourself. So I feel like you need to start there. I mean, you might not be able to cold turkey be like, okay, divorcing, separating you, mom, you go somewhere else. Maybe you can't do all of that overnight, but maybe start with small things. Like try to get some relatives or some help with your mom so that you're not doing all of it on your own. Maybe separate from your spouse or at least tell him what it is. Like this isn't gonna work anymore. You're either gonna stop or we're gonna separate. Either way, you need to make some steps to change the situation that you're in. Because if you just keep living the same day over and over with all of these different scenarios, your life isn't gonna change at all. Yeah, so my advice would be try to alleviate some of your responsibility if you can and create boundaries for yourself with your spouse, with your mom, with your relatives, whoever's in your life. Set boundaries and start to put yourself first at least a little bit. That, oh. I feel for you though, that is a really tough situation that you're in. I hope that it gets better for you and make those hard decisions, make those little steps because that's the only way that your situation is gonna change. Okay, the next story, I believe that she used real names from what I remember her telling me, so I'm going to create fake names for this. But the next one says, hi Leah. So recently I had to drop a best friend of three years. She started dating this guy back in March. From the get-go, I wasn't really a fan of him. Their first date, they went to the rodeo and she asked him to pick her up from her house. They had a great time, he dropped her off, and before he dropped her off, he told her, I thought we were gonna have sex since you asked me to give you a ride what first red flag that's a red flag 100 percent. the first time i met him was at my friend's birthday lunch one of my guy friends will call him alex one of my guy friends alex is also friends with this guy this guy's name is nathan i had asked alex what he thought of nathan and if there's anything concerning i should know about him i'm trying to look out for my best friend after all alex and nathan were talking one day and alex told nathan i asked about him i got upset with alex for telling nathan and he apologized he said it slipped into their convo and alex didn't think it was a big deal to tell him i guess the day that i met nathan nathan was super arrogant and during a conversation we had he asked Asked, why are you asking other people about me instead of asking other people to find out who I am? Why don't you just get to know me yourself? Sir, what? <laughs> I can talk to whoever I want to about you and still form my own opinion about you. I literally told him just that. I was so angry. Who do you think you are to tell me that? 
period. Anyways, months go by and several people confronted my best friend about this guy's past. He has allegations against him regarding how he coerced three to four different women to have sex with him. Coerced consent is not true consent. Say it louder for the people in the back. He even got kicked out of his fraternity for showing his brothers a picture of a girl he was messing around with at the time. A breach of privacy. More and more people came to my friend to warn her about him, but she always was super defensive and took her man's word over everyone else's. I started to reflect on the situation and I was like, does she not think these girls' stories are true? One of my other friends, Megan, had someone tell her bad things about this guy. We told the girl and instead of being appreciative that we told her, she was defensive and upset that we told her and blamed us for giving her anxiety. She and I talked about it one day and she basically denied the stories were true, said that her man is not that type of guy. And I asked her why she believed him. She said she asked him if he made these women feel uncomfortable and forced them to do things they didn't want to do. And he said, no. I'm like, okay, that's it. You can't just take people's word for what it is. Of course, he's going to say no. Just because it isn't flat out our word, that doesn't mean he didn't sexually assault these women. I asked her if she messaged these women herself to find out the truth, if she would believe their side. And she said, yes, but she doesn't want to confront them because of her past trauma. I was like, you're basically delaying the truth. You only only believe Nathan because you haven't confronted these girls yet. That's not reasonable. There are things I can forgive and look past, but sexual assault is a non-negotiable for me. I gave this guy and my friend both the chance to explain to me in depth about what happened, if it is true that he actually didn't assault these women, but both didn't reply to me. The guy wanted to talk on the phone and I said no. I asked him to text me or voice message me because I wanted it on record what he said so I can process his side as needed without getting manipulated. Him not responding to me, not wanting to talk on the phone was evidence enough for me. If he truly didn't do what these people are claiming he did, I'd expect him to want his truth to be out on the table. Trying to make a long story short, my question to you is this. Have you ever had a best friend that was dating someone with a terrible reputation? Were you able to look past it? Sorry for the long email. Girl, it's okay. We love the tea. Just wanted to see what you thought and if you agree with my decision of dropping her or how this situation could have been handled differently. I told my friend I want to hear his side and I'm open to hearing his side, but they both ignored me essentially. So I had no choice but to drop her. Girl, okay. First of all, this chair is not that comfortable, okay? But first of all, I think you did the right thing in dropping her. And I say that because I've totally been in your shoes where I've had girlfriends that date really shitty guys, but they always defend the guy. And you're just like, what the fuck? I've totally been that. Honestly, I may have been that girl before. I may have been her where like, you just refuse to see the red flags and like, the bad qualities in the person and you will like fight to the death for this shitty ass man. I've definitely been that girl before, but honestly, I agree with you to drop the person because it's like, first of all, your friend should at least take what you're saying to heart because she, she should know that what you're telling her is coming from a place of care and concern for her. And if she just automatically thinks you're being like negative about her dude or whatever and being automatically defensive like that, she's forgetting the roles here. She's putting this guy above you and believing him over you. She hasn't even known him as long as she's known you. And she's making him this saint and she's making you the bad guy. And it's like, obviously don't drop your friends over them not listening to you one time. But if it's a consistent thing where they just always pick the other person over you, they don't value your friendship, your opinion and your concern, it's like, are we really friends then? Because I'm not telling you this to ruin your life or ruin your relationship. Like I'm telling you this because I'm your friend. I care about you and we want to make sure that this is a good person for you to associate with so that you don't get hurt in the end. He doesn't hurt you. He doesn't do any of these dangerous things to you. Like you're just being a good friend. The other thing is by dropping a person like that, you're setting a boundary for yourself and that's what you should do. I've had friends that I've backed away from because they always ask for my advice advice. They are always in bad relationships and then want to vent to me about it. And then when I give them my advice over and over and over and over again, and they never take it, it's like, okay, I'm tired of giving you advice you're never going to take. Why do you keep complaining to me about the same thing that like you can't find a good guy or whatever, whatever the situation is, you keep complaining about the same thing, but you never change it. You never change your habits. You never take my advice. It's like at some point, as the friend, you're tired. Now it's becoming irritating. It's becoming annoying. So to me, that's just putting up a boundary and saying like, okay, I tried my best with you. I tried to give you my advice. I tried to warn you. I tried to get you out of a bad situation. I was respectful and you just keep shitting on me basically. So I can't, it's hard to be friends with someone like that. So I think by cutting off a friend like that, it's not a bad thing. You're not the bad guy for doing that. I think you just set a boundary, which is a hundred percent fair. I know it's a really tough situation to be in because obviously that person is your friend, but it's not like you weren't there for her. You were definitely there for her. She just rejected you time and time again, and you can only take 
take the pushback so much before you're just like, okay, I'm done. All you can do is one, what you've done, tell her how you feel, tell her what you've heard, give the information to her and now it's in her court you can move on with your life and maybe if your friendship is meant to come back together then hopefully she will realize that you were just trying to look out for her she'll realize that the guy is bad or the relationship wasn't right for her and if you guys become friends again she will respect that you tried to help her and she'll probably appreciate you voicing it because so many friends have these opinions about the spouse and all these things but never voice it just to not rock the boat but I feel like you're a good friend for actually voicing it to her and letting her know these things that you've heard or these things that you know about this person. So yeah, I think what she did was right. I wouldn't put up with it, especially with those kinds of allegations. Like, no. It just sounds like she wants to believe he's a good guy regardless of all these things. And you can't make her see what she needs to see. You can only do what you did, tell her and hope that she sees it. But if she doesn't see it, you can't make her see it, you know? If you ever do have another conversation with her about all of this, or if she comes back saying like, hey, I wanna be friends again, and she's still with this person, I would ask her, cause I feel like this question really makes people think because if someone is in a relationship that has a lot of red flags, but they can't see it, it's not that they're dumb or unintelligent or they don't know what respect looks like or they don't know what a good healthy relationship looks like. They do, they just can't see it in the situation they're in because they're in it. So maybe ask her, if y'all ever have a conversation again, ask her, if I was in this relationship with Nathan, would you be okay with me being in that relationship? Given all the circumstances and everything you've heard, if I, as your friend, was in the same exact type of relationship, would you be okay with that? Because they can't see it for themselves, like, for their relationship, but they might be able to see it if they imagined the same kind of treatment to their best friend, their sister, you know? One of my best friends was in a really shitty relationship where he constantly manipulated her and any argument he would flip and make it her fault. And she knows that that's what he was doing was disrespectful and manipulation and gaslighting. She knows that, but because it's happening to her, she just takes it and is like, oh no, he like cares about me, blah, blah, blah. So I had asked her, if I were in a relationship with a man and he spoke to me the way that this guy speaks to you, would you let that fly? Would you be okay with that? And she was like, absolutely not. So I was like, then why do you let him do that to you? If you wouldn't want me to be treated like that, why do you let yourself get treated like that? You know, ask her that. That really gets him thinking. If I would fight this man for my bestie, like why am I letting him treat me like this? But yes, overall, I think you did the right thing. If you guys ever talk again, you and this girl, ask her that and see what she says. Okay, the next one says, hey girl, love watching your videos and definitely feel like we'd be friends if we lived in the same state because I feel like we're the same person. We probably would. Anyways, writing in to look for some advice from girlies who have been laid off before. As the world knows, Twitter laid off thousands of us last week and I was impacted by those layoffs. Part of me is fine with it because who wants to work for him anyway? Not a fan of Elon whatsoever, period. But I'm grieving the place I did love and the coworkers who became family. I was there for four and a half years. I also have this sense of panic about who knows how long I'll be unemployed. Will I ever find a job I love again? Imposter syndrome about eventually joining a new company and having to prove myself all over again, etc. I feel like you may be able to relate given how transparent you've been about your job and your workplace, although you are very much employed. Well, when you wrote this, I was. But um, appreciate any advice or stories you can share to help lift me up and give me hope during this time. Okay, first of all, so sorry that you got laid off from a job that you actually really enjoyed and you enjoyed the environment. Sometimes it is hard to find a good work environment. As far as your panic and anxiety towards, will I ever find a job I like again? How long am I gonna be unemployed for? What if I get a new job and I have to prove myself all over again and it doesn't work out the way it did at Twitter? All of those things, you have to remember that everything happens for a reason. So even though you really enjoyed this job and you invested a good amount of time there, whatever is next is one, meant for you, and two, is going to be better in some way, shape, or form. The universe or whoever, whatever higher power you believe in, if you believe in a higher power, this is the journey they put you on, right? So you were supposed to work at Twitter for four and a half years. You weren't supposed to work at Twitter any longer for whatever reason. And that road can take you either straight to the next great thing that like you thought Twitter was great and this next thing is about to be fucking 10 times better. Or it might be a rockier road where your next few jobs aren't great, you don't love them, but then that third or fourth job is like mind-blowingly good. It changes your life. It might, 
you might be headed towards a completely different career path, a completely different field. You don't know. So just remember that this was supposed to happen. You will not be unemployed forever. For some reason, when I was younger and I couldn't drive yet, I always would think to myself, what if I'm the one person that just cannot figure out how to drive? And I'm like the one person on earth who just doesn't drive because I, I can't figure out how, or I'm just so bad at it that I can't drive. I had to remind myself that if millions and millions and millions of people can drive, why do I think I'm going to be the one fucking person who can't? Of course I'm going to be able to. And then I grew up and of course I was able to drive just fine. That made me think of this situation because you're thinking like, what if I never ever find a job again? There's millions and millions and millions of people on this earth. Some as smart as you, some with the same level of education, some with higher, some with way less that are getting jobs. Okay. So try not to go there in your mind. You will get another job if you want one. And whatever jobs you get after this is either going to be the right job for you, or it's going to lead you to what you're supposed to be doing. So just have faith in that. Remember that you might not see the reason for things right now, but maybe in five years when you're in a whole new life, you're going to be like, ah, this is why I was laid off and not meant to be working at this place anymore. You know, try to stay positive. You will get another job. You will end up doing something that you love again. I pinky promise swear and everything will be okay. Believe in yourself and know that whatever's on the other side of this thing that you didn't expect, it's going to be amazing. Okay, I think I only have time for one more entry. So let's get into the last one. Hi, Leah. I just wanted to start by saying I love your content. I think this new idea is so fun. Thank you so much. I have so much fun doing it. I'm so glad that you guys like it. What I need advice on is a friendship. I've been friends with this girl for about 10 years, but for the last four years or so, we've gotten really close. I'm a really introverted person and I can't be friends with someone who needs constant reassurance or needs to spend a lot of time with me. Are we the same person? Cause fucking same. She really wasn't like that at first and we had a lot in common. I enjoyed spending time with her. However, the last year or so things have started to change. She texts me all the time and I don't know how to take no for an answer. Are we the same human being? Like honestly, she expects to spend every single birthday and holiday and occasion together. She wants to hang out every single weekend. I feel like I can't even make plans with just my husband without her getting upset that she wasn't invited. When I hang out with my other friends, she makes sarcastic remarks about them. There are even friends that I feel like I literally can't make plans with or she would get upset that she wasn't invited. And I'm an introverted person that rarely makes plans. It's not like I'm going out every weekend and not inviting her. She does things like when I talk about our friendship, she'll make sure I say best friend friend or even girlfriend. We laugh it off, but it's been really weird. I honestly think she might have feelings I honestly think she might have feelings for me even though she's in a relationship with a man and I'm also married to a man. We are both bisexual, but we're both in committed relationships. I am not attracted to her like that. I feel like I've been giving her mixed signals and I'm not sure what to do. I'm not a confrontational person. Actually, I avoid confrontation at all costs, which is probably how we got here. But sometimes I feel like our relationship is toxic. I know it's not one-sided and me not expressing my boundaries from the beginning has added to the problem. Do you think that I should ask my friend for space or do you think I should give her the benefit of the doubt and try to solve the problem and keep the relationship. Thanks for keeping this confidential. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Okay. First of all, we're the same human being, like literally the same human. I think if you've been friends for this person for 10 years and neither of you have done something so bad that you should just throw away the friendship and be like, we're not friends anymore. Since that hasn't taken place from what you've said, and it's just been some rockiness here and there and some miscommunication and maybe some boundary issues, I would just have a conversation with her. I know that's going to be hard for you to do because you hate confrontation. I get that, but you got to say something or it's going to end up staying the way it is, which is clearly irritating you, or more likely it's going to get a million times worse. It's easier to say something now than when it gets to a really bad point. You know what I mean? So I would have a conversation with her. I wouldn't necessarily ask her if she has feelings for you, but I would just make it clear that y'all are friends in some way. Like just keep reiterating that like, I love our friendship. I love that we're friends, 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 friends. Like just emphasize the friendship thing. So she gets the hint. I would say to ask her if she has feelings, but I feel like unless you're like more sure, I wouldn't even bring that up. If, if you felt like sure, like this girl is in love with me and I'm not in love with her, then I would bring it up. But if you're not sure and you're just like, maybe she has feelings for me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring that up in conversation, but I would definitely still have a conversation about the boundaries and how you're feeling. And you can still try to avoid the confrontation with your delivery. So just don't deliver it in a irritated, annoyed, bothered or angry kind of way. I would just approach it like, 
in a loving, regular conversation kind of way, if you're able to. I think if you just let her know that going out and being super social and talking to people all the time literally drains you and you get energy from your alone time. Just be like, girl, I love you so much. Like, love you forever, but I need my recovery days from humans. Like just say it in a funny manner like that and maybe she'll get it and understand. I feel like I've gotten to a place with my friends where they know. They know who I am and they know my habits. Like sometimes my friend my friend calls me every single day and I'm not a talker to people. Right now I'm talking to a camera so it's different. I'll dodge her calls for three or four days and she doesn't get mad about it because she knows how I am. If anything after three days of me not answering her calls she'll just be like you good? And I'm like yeah I'm just having one of my moments. And she's like okay. And she totally understands because she knows that I am this way and she's not that way. So I think if you have the conversation with her, you guys can get to a place like that where she respects your boundaries and when you're not responding or you don't wanna hang out all the time or you're canceling plans, she doesn't take it offensively, she just understands how you are. So you can, you can say it to her and have a conversation with her and just explain like, this is how I am, as opposed to the conversation being like, you keep doing this and you keep making me upset by doing this. And it makes me uncomfortable when you do this. Try not to put the whole conversation on like, you do this, you do this, you do this, and I don't like it. Try to make it more like put the blame on yourself so that she doesn't take it offensively. And then she might be more understanding and be like, girl, I totally get it. All you have to say is a word and I know. I feel like she should be understanding of that. Honestly, if she's not understanding of that and she like totally blows up with you just for setting your boundaries and telling her how you feel, then she's not that great of a friend to you. The friendship should be both parties trying to make each other happy and like y'all have a happy friendship and both people want the other person to be happy. If she only likes you when you do stuff her way and then she gets upset when you say, this is my boundary and I need space, then she's not really that good of a friend to you. As far as her getting upset when you hang out with other people, I think also that needs to be a conversation where you just tell her like, hey, you know that I love you, right? And when I hang out with other people, that doesn't mean that I love you any less. And you can even tell her like, hey, I love you, like bestie for life, but could you not talk shit about my other friends or like make jokes about them? Because I love them too. And I just want everyone to be cool with each other. I think all of this has to do with you just setting a boundary. And even though that sounds scary and like, I don't wanna fucking do it, I don't even wanna deal with it i totally get that but i think if you just get it out of the way and do it one time you won't have to keep thinking about this or thinking should i have this conversation like all the anxiety you're getting by not having the conversation instead of continuing to harbor on all of it just get the conversation out of the way one conversation and then you can breathe and just go from there you're not gonna know how she reacts unless you have the conversation with her because right now we're kind of assuming that she's gonna get defensive and angry and that's not really fair of us right so we have to give her the benefit of having the conversation with her and seeing how she chooses to handle it. So yeah, in this case, I personally would give her the benefit of the doubt and try to solve the problem and keep the friendship. And I hate to say it because I could literally do this all day, but that's gonna be it for episode two. My camera's about to die. My parents are on their way over. A lot's going on today. I do have two entries that I didn't get to today, but they did submit them just today. So you two, if you're watching this, your entries will be in episode three. So again, please, please, please submit your entries to two cents with Tosh at gmail.com. Just like in this video, all of the entries remain anonymous. Just don't forget to use fake names. If you don't use fake names, just tell me so that I can make up the names in the story for you and feel free to share as much or as little as you want regardless we will talk about it but i appreciate you guys so much everyone who's written in for episode one and two thank you so so much i love you guys from the bottom of my heart again please try to keep the comments all kind let's not judge anyone this is a judge free zone but thank you guys so so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye I'm